Okay, welcome to this call of Breaking Free, a chance to talk to people who are on an interesting journey in their lives to actually break free of the, the humdrum um, and move on to something that's more like their dream, dream life. And I'm very happy to have with me today Robin Morton, um, who will obviously give us a, a, a good rundown on, on who he is, what he does. Um, and I've actually known Robin now for a couple of years. Um, but obviously we can get into that on the, on the call. So Robin, welcome. <laughs> hey Julian, how are you doing today? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, sort of busy times. Um, and, and Robin, I mean, this, the theme of this call is basically breaking free. And I know that, that you're on something of a journey like that. Could you sort of give us a little bit of a sense of what your, your aims are, what your dreams are? Yes, well, at the moment I am living on, on the west coast of Scotland on a tiny little island. That uh, view in the background is it's where I live. It, unfortunately, it's not actually a view out of my window. Uh, the weather today is not quite as, uh, as bonny looking as that. But yes, I, I live in the west coast of Scotland, a tiny, tiny little island. And I moved here uh, when I got married about uh, well, a couple of decades ago almost now to escape the, the humdrum, uh, you know, rat race kind of lifestyle that I was living. I, you know, I, I did a lot of traveling when I was younger, um, not quite as adventurous as you, but I, I did uh, a lot of traveling and I realized that, you know, the world is a big place and I, I wasn't really comfortable about, about a nine to five uh, boring job, but for some reason I ended up being funneled into that and I was working in places like London and I also worked in, you know, California and San Francisco, uh, you know, but all in uh, really boring jobs. I was, a, uh, I called myself the reluctant accountant. I, I, I left uh, college with a, a general uh, degree and I, I drifted into accountancy and I, I was trying to pass my accountancy exams in the evening while working in a cubicle all day. <laughs> And I was, you know, bored rigid and I did it for far too long. And then I eventually I escaped. I met a, a wonderful woman and we decided to get married and live in the Highlands of Scotland. It's been a very difficult journey up here, to be honest, because, you know, jobs are few and far between. Um, you know, it's, it's a kind of place where I live, where a lot of people move to, to retire. Uh, it's a chocolate box, beautiful place, as you can see in the background there. But, you know, properties are very expensive. And um, so we did the, the, the you know, the, the cliche thing of online business. We, we started a bricks and mortar business, plumbed all our money into it and lost it all. <laughs> uh, we lost our house. We ended up virtually homeless about uh, 10 years ago. And it was a big, big decision at that point. We had a young family whether to go back to a city, a smoky, horrible city, and start all over again, or, or try and make it work uh, up here. So, you know, I, I've done everything the last 10 years, dug ditches, washed windows, cut grass, you know, driven coal lorries, you name it. Um, and then I, I decided to, you know, I'd always had this idea of writing a book. And you know that story, we've all got a book in us somewhere, uh, and Julian, I would love to read your book when you eventually publish one, because I think you'd be fantastic uh, source material for a book. So I, I started writing. I had plenty of time and little else at that point. And I've, you know, I've, I've carved a, a, a career as a, as a thriller writer. I write as, uh, under the name Alex Breck, and I, I just published my sixth book uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So 
Um, yes, we, we are still on a journey. It's not a great way of making money unless you are J.K. Rowling or, you know, Ian Rankin or something like that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not uh, going to make a, a million out of writing books, but it's my passion. It's enabled me to, to do other things as well. And, you know, traveling is still very high on the agenda. I, I, there's a lot of places in the world I want to see. Um, I will probably always be based now here in, in the west of Scotland because it really is paradise, but I do want to see other parts of the world. Um, I am also keen to do things, you know, passion projects, you know, and at the moment I'm heavily involved in a passion project is to raise money for the bushfire animals in Australia. So I'm cycling a thousand miles in 10 days one week from today. <laughs> so I, 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 that's, that's taking up most of my time right now. Okay. Um, now you, you mentioned the, the writing, and I think there may be people who uh, are on this call, you know, listening to us, who, you know, have this sort of thought, oh, you know, I'd love to become an author, that type of thing. Um, but what, what, what do you say are the practical challenges in terms of actually... <laughs> Know, writing a book, but also getting it out there um, and, and bringing in some level of income from it. I think I think there are very very few practical barriers now. Um, I think maybe you know I I wasn't involved in that uh, industry twenty years ago, but you know the traditional way of you know finding an agent, um, getting that agent to take you on, and then that agent submits your manuscript to publishers who are like the gatekeepers of the book publishing world. Um, that was a very, very difficult uh, journey for people back then. And I think, um, you know, most people would write something and it would end up in what they would call a, a slush file, just a pile of manuscripts and perhaps never ever see the light of day. And your chances of being published were very, very small. I think, um, you know, unless you were, you know, 19 years old and this new prodigy, you know, uh, on the market, you're very unlikely to get any attention, or unless you are a celebrity. You know that's a pet peeve of mine that you know celebrities get get books published very very easily because they're already known. So that was very very difficult back then. However, now with you know new technology and, and the advent of Kindle and Amazon, all that kind of thing, it's actually very very easy nowadays. You can you can. The, the, the biggest barrier now is still having the, the, the creative juice to do it. Uh, but, you know, most of us probably do have the gist of a book in there. It's still a craft, you know, it's not something that, you know, I think there are, the, the, there's something like 42,000 books published online every week. It could be every month, so don't quote me on that, but it's a heck of a lot, a lot of books. So you still have to work at your craft of writing. I, I've always been interest in words. I've always been, um, despite working with figures for too many years, uh, it was always words that uh, interested me. I can drive down a motorway and spot a spelling mistake in a advertising hoarding from, you know, 500 meters. Uh, so words have always interested me. You still have to work at being a writer. It's, it's very easy to do it in terms of the technology and there are very few barriers. It costs virtually nothing to put a book up on Kindle. But that doesn't mean it's any good. <laughs> and I'm not saying I am uh, any good, but it, it, there's still work involved in it. But in terms of practical barriers nowadays, there are no, no gatekeepers. The, the, the other thing I would say on that, uh, Julian, is that I thought naively that writing the book would be the hard bit. And once I published my first book in 2012, on Amazon, uh, and it was published by Amazon. I had no involvement in that really. I, I actually thought that would be it. I could sit back on my little island uh, and grow plants and and you know play with my my my, my young son. Uh, and then all I heard was crickets, as they say. <laughs> Nobody knew that I had written a book apart from my family and friends. And that's when I I got into the online world and started learning about marketing. And that's how. How we met ultimately you know um, so yeah I 
I I would say do it. You know, if you have a book idea, do it. But you know, work at it. Um, get somebody to edit it. Uh, you know, professional editor, uh, a proofreader. You know, get someone to sense check it. If it's a fictional story, make sure there are no uh, gaping plot holes. Um, you know, but even a published book. I'm reading a book right now by a very famous published author, and I found a, a spelling error in the first chapter. So you know, these things happen. Don't don't worry about perfection. You know, in our online industry, you know, we have a we have a saying ready, fire, aim, you know, don't wait for that perfect moment to, to jump on, on, on your, your journey and, and, and kickstart your project. Don't wait forever. Um, you know, I was 40 something when I published my first book. Don't wait that long, you know, get in there and just do it. Um, but be prepared to work at it. It's not, it's not that easy. Um, and if it's a, if it's a non-fiction book, you know, do your research first. I mean, there, there are huge scopes out there for, you know, if you can write a book about, you know, right now we're in the, in the grips of this pandemic, you know, if you could write a book about how to survive lockdown, for example, you know, uh, that, that could get a huge amount of interest in a very, very short space of time if you, if you do it right. So, yeah, there's a huge potential out there. Right. And I mean, you're mentioning something here that's very important for people maybe who are not so tuned into it is this idea that you can build a business online. You could be sitting, you know, in the wilds of, of uh, Scotland and to be able to actually reach out online to people. And I suppose the key thing here is to uh, is to develop that skill of marketing. I mean, how how you mentioned the, the fact you heard crickets <laughs> um, when you first published that book, um, what did you do in, in practical terms to try to ratchet things up? Well, I, I spent a lot of time learning, you know, the, the tricks of the trade, you know, uh, learning about, you know, the technological sides like Zoom, uh, you know, social media, uh, building an email list, having a website. At the moment, I have, uh, you know, a website for my writer uh, life. I have a podcast. I have you know, Twitter, Instagram, you know, I'm not an expert in all these things and, and I am still on a, on, a, on a journey with those things as well. Uh, Facebook, I've used a lot. Um, and, you know, the technology, I can talk to you right now from the other side of the world, uh, gives us a huge audience if you can get it right. Um, so, yeah, I, I learned, you know, all about advertising and y you always go through hoops and do things you in hindsight, you don't need to do. I learned about HTML coding and how to build a website and all that kind of stuff, which really isn't isn't necessary. But uh, you know, it's, it's you just really got to immerse yourself in it. If you have a passion for something, you will put a lot of hours in uh, uh, happily uh, to to learn. You know, it's 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 a craft as well. You know, marketing. I am still a long long way away from being. Uh, where I would like to be on that basis. Um, but, you know, it's just, it is a journey. You, you know, you, you, your Kindle book, your, your, your paperback book, you know, I have um, all my books are in paperback as well. I set up a, a publishing house to publish my own books, um, which is called Silachan Fort, which is a really good Gaelic name, uh, which sounds really difficult, but again, it's very, very easy. It's basically pressing a few buttons and just going through a process. You buy some ISBN numbers. Uh, you, again, you have to go through a process. It's all about, you know, verifying who you are, accrediting yourself, all that kind of thing. And now my, my paperbacks are my own book. They're not Amazon's, even though I use Amazon to, to publish them for me. They're all print and demand, so I don't have a garage full of uh, paperbacks. Uh, although I do have some, because I like to you know, sign some of my books personally and post them out to people. But yeah, so I, I have my own publishing house and so my books have a logo on the back with my, you know, my uh, publishing imprint on it. So it's uh, very professional looking. There is really nothing to, to distinguish one of my books from one of Ian Rankin's books. You know, he's a top Scottish crime 
tartan noir uh, thriller uh, writer. So there's nothing really to distinguish between my books now. Um, I probably don't spend as much money on my cover uh, editor and, and all that as he does, but I still get it done professionally. My first book I did myself. Um, I would not recommend that. And, you know, well, I've got four books in one series and I'm just about to start a sequel uh, to a book in another series. And, you know, at some stage, maybe in another five years when I've got, you know, a dozen books, I might completely redo all my covers to make them look uh, congruent with each other, which seems to be the fashionable thing to do right now. So, you know, it's always a journey. You're always learning. I think um, the day you stop learning, I I'm in my 50s now, you know, uh, late 50s. God, where did that go? And, uh, you know, I'm still learning every day. And I really believe that learning something every day is the way to stay, to stay young and to stay interested and interesting, hopefully. Right, right. And, and, and I guess I, I, this part of this process really is um, not just writing one book, uh, and then sitting and waiting, it's a process of writing a number of books, isn't it? Is that, is that how you look at it? I think so. I mean, I, I, personally, I've never been the kind of person who sits at a blank screen and thinks, what am I going to write? My issue is usually how to keep things in my head long enough to be able to write them down and use them. Um, I think from a, you know, from a cold heart, you know, logic point of view, um, if you write a, a series of books, you're probably going to be um, uh, be able to hold people's interest better because they want to see the next book and the next book and, uh, and if they buy the third book in your series and they like it they may go back hopefully and buy books one and books two um, you know people like Lee Child and, and you know J.K. Rowling and, and Ian Rankin and all these uh, famous famous authors they, they all write series of books um, when I wrote the, the Devil You Know a couple of years ago which was a standalone thriller it was very much darker and you know quite a hard read in some parts um, I didn't intend to write another one of, of, about those characters and that story and uh, it was only because people asked me they said I'd really like to hear more about that you know protagonist I'd like to see what he does next and I was like oh okay and then you just start ideas start coming to you I, I get most of my ideas from real life from newspapers and, and website articles and my uh, book that I've just finished this now, a lot of it was set in uh, Chile and I have never been to Chile, but with the power of the internet, you know, I can read a Chilean newspaper uh, with my breakfast in the morning if I choose to. So, you know, I have been in that area, but I haven't been to Chile. So, you know, it's uh, in inspiration comes quite easily to me. I think, um, then you've got to mold it into a book and, and it, it, it's a process, you know, in your head, you will go through, you know, what you're going to write the plot and then you will find holes in that plot or things that are not going to work or, you know, real life sometimes takes over. Uh, I nearly, um, I've nearly given up writing sometimes because real life is so, so dramatic, you know, I mean, take right now, you know, last night, um, that terrible, uh, explosion in, in, in Beirut, you know, that, that is, you know, more dramatic than anything that's ever happened in any of my books. I do have an explosive uh, climax to my book just published in London, which uh, happened in London, but it's tiny compared to that, you know, so uh, real life does give you lots of, lots of inspiration. Uh, and it's a case of sometimes sympathetically uh, molding it into a story. You've got to be careful sometimes you're not going to you know, offend anybody. Um, and then other times you're overly dramatizing things to make them bigger and more exciting than they actually were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think the thing is nowadays also, there's an awful lot of um, information out there to help people with the practical side of actually getting your book published. In fact, there's, there's, there's almost too much information. If you Google it, you'll find tons and tons of stuff. Um, I think there's some quite good uh, paid courses even, um, sometimes not all that expensive, where people will work, walk you through uh, the actual process to go through. I mean, have you, have you used anything like, you know, paid course at all? Yes, well, well I'm in a, in a group of uh, 
they have various services. They're called Books Go Social, and they're very, very good. The, the, the main guy is based in Ireland, but they have people all around the world. Um, I would suggest joining lots of groups, you know, authors groups, writers groups, readers groups. Uh, you know, be a reader. While, you know, if you're not a reader, you'll never be a writer, uh, particularly in fiction. Um, so read lots of books, join lots of groups, and listen to what people are saying. Uh, you know, when I first started, the, the social media scene was still very, very small, so that wasn't really available so much. Uh, just be wary of people who are going to take your money all the time. Uh, you can do a lot of it uh, without spending a lot of money. Uh, however, if you treat it as a hobby, which probably most people do when they first start writing, remember you'll only earn a hobby income out of it. Uh, if you want to do it seriously, you need to like everything in life, I would say, invest in it. Invest in yourself, um, you know, in terms of time. But also, you do need to spend some money at some point. Get get somebody apart from your granny to to read your book before you publish it, because your granny will always tell you that she loves it, no matter what. One of the things that I mean, we we met actually through a process of actually um, with a, a a gold company where we were actually looking at building assets. And so that's an important aspect of what you're doing, isn't it? In terms of, uh, it's all very well to earn an income, that's one thing, but what's your approach in terms of actually, you know, building assets, building wealth, uh, moving towards a situation where you are, uh, you know, you become more financially free. I mean, what, have you got a plan for that? I do have a plan for that. Having lost everything before, um, it was a very, very frightening experience. I mean, I, 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 I've, I've got a part of the book that I've just published there where uh, one of the main characters is, appears to be homeless. You know, he's on the streets of, of London. He doesn't really know what's going on and he's you know, begging for food. Um, I wasn't quite at that stage, but when I did lose everything, absolutely everything, I had to sell my treasured re record collection. It really, um, you know, it makes you makes you think. It's you, you never quite recover from that feeling, and so even though my writing uh, is doing okay, you know, um, I have I still have to supplement my my income by doing other things. And, and the gold business was really a safety uh, net for me at the time. I, I if I had a good uh, month with my you know marketing uh, activities, I would spend any money I made on a advert for the next month because that's what the gurus advise you to do isn't it they, they say find something that works and scale it up and so what happens is you spend your money on a solo ad to get more people on your list and that dies a death and you you don't get it doesn't work because you know it's it's, it's all a learning experience so every month i was broke no matter what i did and my wife would say, yeah, that's great, Robin. Yeah, that's great what you're doing. Man. But, you know, have you got any money to give me? I need to buy some food or, you know, something like that. The car needs fixed. Um, so I realized that I needed to, a plan B and saving a little bit of gold, I thought would be a sensible thing because I wouldn't spend it. And I think it's fairly true to say most people that save gold, they keep it. And right now, as you know, Julian, gold is it's hit an all-time high, you know, it's, it's going through the roof. And I think in terms of economic turmoil uh, like we have now, gold performs very, very well. So it was really just a, a boring savings plan, really, not sexy or exciting at all. Um, but then, as, as you know, uh, Julian, we have, you know, the, the business has grown arms and legs and we have uh, become, you know, much more wealthy than we could have imagined through that business, which again has given me more time freedom to pursue, you know, the passions of my life. So um, yeah, I'm very, very happy. I could not ever, ever have imagined, even two years ago, that I would be in the financial situation I am in now, and that is 100% down to my gold business. I don't do really any other marketing work. I don't really do any other work. Now, apart from writing my books and, and marketing uh, my, our gold business. 
So yeah, it's it's been great. My my plan is to to um, you know to to be financially you know secure for life, n- never to have that worry that the rug could be pulled from under my feet, uh, and also the same thing for my family, and uh, you know anybody who who I I know and love, uh, I want to make sure that that can't happen to them. You know my you know you, you go to college now and you end up with coming out with you know, tens of thousands of euros, pounds, dollars worth of debt. And I don't really want that for my family. Uh, so yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's still a journey, but, um, you know, gold going up, gold being at record prices this week, for example, is not too shabby. We can't really complain about that. Uh, so yeah, very exciting. Yeah, and, and I think it's probably great to be um, have that mindset where you're, you're, you're building assets, you're looking towards a situation where you could eventually bring in passive income, you could get to that point where uh, you, you could literally just almost stop work and yet there's still enough money coming in to support you. I mean, is that is that the trajectory in terms of that? Yeah, yeah I mean, you actually hit the nail on the head there. That, that, is the, that is the key point, is not to be chasing income. You know, if you go to work, you know, which, you know, most of us have had to do uh, most, for most of our lives, going to work, you're trading time for money. I don't care what job it is. It could be a, a bus driver or a, a surgeon. You're still trading time for money. Um, but if you can build assets that work for you, then you are earning income passively. You, you're not swapping time for money. And if you can do it successfully, then your uh, asset income will outweigh what you could ever have made on the nine to five, the 40 hour work week. So that's where more or less where I am at now. Um, It's maybe not quite to the level that I would like it to be at, but it is, I have given up any other paid work. Um, I did work as a part-time lecturer up until a couple of years ago. I taught uh, writing, uh, literature, crime writing, um, couple, you know, nothing huge, but uh, you know, I've, I gave that up. I don't need to do that anymore. Uh, my wife still works, um, but she, you know, I, I, I like to get to the point where she doesn't have to work either. And then we can you know, do all the fun things in life, like you know, all this t- cycling in the rain like I was doing yesterday. I couldn't afford the time to do that if I had to work 40 hours a week. Because I'm cycling, you know, I'm cycling more than 100 hours a week at the moment in, in training for this. I've cycled thousands of miles since January. Uh, a lot of it on a turbo trainer in my shed in the rain. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's having assets work for you, not chasing income. Is, it's a beautiful thing. And most people don't realize that. And if they did, they would literally walk through walls to get there. You know, I can't. I can't recommend it strongly enough. Right, right. Um, it's interesting because you, you mentioned a couple of things there with regards to the fact that essentially what you're doing is you're focusing on your gold business and you're focusing on writing. So you've got that, 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 and that sort of clears you up, and it's probably easier to. To, to, to be focused like that. I mean, there is an argument um, out there that people should be going for lots of uh, streams of income. You know, in other words, you know, you, you can't always rely on this, you can't always rely on that, so you're going for multiple streams of income. I mean, how do you view that particular approach? Uh, well, I agree with that. You know, um, you know if, you, if, if you're an online marketer and, and all your business is done through Facebook, um, Facebook could close down tomorrow. And where would you be? Uh, The beauty of the gold uh, business that I'm involved in, it it is a whole ecosystem. It's it's not just saving gold. uh, It's far too much to go into in a a conversation like this. Uh, And I'm not a financial advisor by any means, but it is a a complete ecosystem. It's involved with blockchain technology. Uh, There are something like six or seven ways I can earn uh, an income out of that uh, whole whole um, business. So um, even if people stop saving gold, I would still be making an income. Uh, there are so many ways 
that uh, that money comes in, I get paid weekly and monthly, um, and my assets are growing uh, to an extent that they are far outweighing any income I'm making. So if I wanted to uh, liquidate some of my assets, um, I, I could also do that. So yes, definitely do not put all your eggs in one basket, but uh, find something that that can can bring in multiple uh, sources of, of income. Definitely, definitely. Right, right. And you mentioned your cycle, right? I mean, can you tell us about that? What's what's all that about? Yes. Well, uh, as as everybody probably knows, there was a terrible uh, you know series of bushfires in Australia um, at the turn of the year, which was their summertime, uh, our winter time over here in Europe. But um, you know, I was very very affected by that. I've got. Several, my wife's got uh, half a dozen cousins in, in Australia, and you know I, I was really badly affected by watching, you know, news footage of, you know, kangaroos on fire and all this kind of thing. It was horrific, horrific uh, situation. So I decided, uh, you know, cycling is a, is a passion of mine, uh, but I had probably only cycled about 100 miles in 2019. It was a very busy year uh, for other reasons. So I, I decided I will do a Land's End to John O'Groats cycle challenge. So Land's End is the southernmost tip of England, way down uh, 700 miles from here. And John O'Groats is the, the northernmost tip of the landmass of the uh, UK. So that's a thousand miles uh, in one trip. So I, I signed up to do that. I paid uh, thousands of pounds to an organization to organize it all for me. So all I had to do was cycle. Uh, and then raise money for um, for the, the bushfire animals. And, uh, you know, in January, February, it, the weather was atrocious. All I did was cycle in, in my shed. Didn't really um, do anything else but, you know, build up my legs. And, uh, of course, the, the COVID situation came about and it became pretty obvious by March that uh, I, I was supposed to do this thing in May. It was going to be impossible to do it. There'd be nowhere to stay at night, nowhere to get anything to eat. We would, and, and in Scotland, we were forbidden for traveling, uh, from traveling more than five miles from home, even in, in exercise. So I did a little bit of sneaky training still. I did a few longer rides, but I was getting more and more uh, grief from uh, the authorities. And I realized that, you know, I can't even do that. So I, I, I'd raised a little bit of sponsorship, not nearly as much as I would have liked, but you know, a few hundred pounds, um, and I asked people, would you be happy if I just cycled a thousand miles in the Scottish Highlands instead in 10 days? The same same kind of challenge, the same distance, the same pain, uh, probably a lot more hills <laughs> because there's nothing flat in the Highlands of Scotland. And they all said, yes, yeah, by all means, go ahead and do that. So I organized to do that. Uh, a couple of months later, and unfortunately, the COVID-19 regulations still wouldn't let me do it. So only now, um, in August, am I permitted to, to do that. So the 12th of August, which is um, the, the exact day that my wife and I met many, many moons ago. It's also my mother-in-law's uh, birthday. So August the 12th, I start 100 miles a day for 10 days, every day. And uh, it, it's going to be tough because, you know, I'm 58 years old. It's um, 100 miles is, even even on a good day, it's going to take me seven or eight hours. You know, some of the hills, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be doing, you know, sometimes four or 5,000 feet of climbing per day. And, you know, as you know, you're a, a great cyclist yourself. As you know, um, hills, the two, th two worst things are hills and wind. And uh, it's very windy in Scotland. Um, I was cycling the other day and my son caught me at the end of my cycle ride and videoed me. <laughs> we put it on Facebook. I, 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 it was like cycling into a brick wall. You know, even going down a steep hill, I had to pedal like crazy to keep going forward. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. I, I'm really going to find it tough and I will be like a zombie. I'm going to try and start six o'clock in the morning each day to give myself as long as possible uh, to, to, to achieve it each day. So I'm not 
you know, going to have an accident or anything like that. Uh, I've got a cycling computer, which will, mm -hmm. you know, uh, GPS uh, track me. So I know where, I, what I'm doing and how far I've got to go. And I'm going to try and make it interesting. You know, uh, there are some beautiful, beautiful, you know, like that scenery behind me. That's, that really is the view from, from my house. Um, uh, so I, I'm going to go to Glencoe and, and Loch Ness and, you know, all these kind of beautiful places and try and <clears throat> take, have time to hopefully take a few uh, snaps and maybe a, a, make a couple of videos to share with people in the evening when I get back. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I'm going to keep the sponsorship open until the end of September so people can still donate after I've finished, right. you know, see what happens. Okay, and so where, where could people get in touch with you with regards to the cycle ride if they wanted to sponsor you? Uh, well, I, have a, I do have a, a Just Giving um, site, so I, I could maybe give that link to you. And, uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put that in the, in the link below uh, the video. That would be, that would be good. Um, also, you. I'll put your, your links with regards to just contacting you generally, your, your website. So that yeah, that'd be, be fantastic. Yes. That would be good, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that sounds good. That sounds great. An amazing sort of adventure to be uh, doing, doing that and maybe. Um, well, 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 thanks, Robin. Is there anything else you'd like to finish off with? I mean, um, we covered quite a lot, but is there something else that a message to people who are thinking of breaking free, they're, they're stuck in their jobs or they're stuck in a business which is using up too much time? What would be your message to them, do you think? I, I would say just do it, you know, just take that first step the first step is always the hardest you know the first mile when you're running is the hardest the first mile few miles when you go cycling is always the hardest the first words you write on a page will probably be the hardest um the first time you post online for your online business will be the hardest the first facebook live you ever do will definitely be the hardest thing um just do it uh, don't worry about perfection to start with um, there'll never be a perfect moment, that, you know, so just take action. What is the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is that you go back to your boring job again, you know, but there's a whole life out there. There's a whole world of opportunity, you know, whether it's, you know, to make money or have fun, you know, so I would, you only get one life. Uh, don't waste it. Um, just do it. That's, that's it. Oh. Great message, great message. Well, thanks very much for being on the call, Robin. Um, good to talk to you. Um, it just looks so enticing looking at that view behind you. Um, I'm not sure if that's the actual weather today with you. Probably not. But Not uh, today, but... <laughs> But anyway, okay. Well, good to have you on the call. Um, if anybody wants to obviously uh, sponsor Robin, you know, you you'll, uh, can check the, the links below, um, you know, catch up with him on his website and so forth like that. If you need to know anything about, you know, writing books or something, you know, get in touch with Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Uh, check yeah. out his um, website, which is um, it's Alex Breck, isn't it? It's the, your, your yeah. yeah. Yes, A-L-E-X Breck, B-R-E-C-K, yeah. Okay. okay, great. Okay, good stuff, Robin. Okay. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.